for example, if somebody comes in with labor breathing, I, I receive emails with people who are um, recovering post-COVID and they have long COVID. And when we measure their breath whole time, it can be as low as three seconds. And these people, they can't string a sentence together. They're continuously breathless. Now, with the, that group of individuals, we need to give them very specific gentle breathing exercises. They already feel suffocated. They already feel air hunger. So with that exercise, with those people, then we start them with breathing recovery. Very simple exercise. Anybody can do it. We have the person take a normal breath in through the nose and out through the nose and pinch the nose and hold the breath for three to five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Let go and breathe in through the nose. Breathe normal for 10 seconds. And again, normal breath in and out, pinch the nose and hold. Hold the breath for three to five seconds. We do that to have a calming effect on the breathing with the objective being to slow down the respiratory rate. The second exercise that we look at is decongesting the nose. It's been known since 1923 that if you hold your breath, your nose opens up and it's not known exactly how it happens. There are some papers showing that it's increased carbon dioxide. So any of your listeners who have or viewers who have nasal congestion, I'd like you to try this. Don't try it if you're pregnant or don't try it if you've got serious medical conditions, because it's important that you recover your breathing afterwards. But it's a relatively safe exercise to decongest your nose. First of all, you could test which side of your nose is more obstructed. Try your left side of the nose and then try the right side. So you take a breath in through the right side and a breath in through the left side. You could use a mobile phone. And for example, you do the fogging test. You breathe onto your mobile phone. You clean the glass, breathe onto the glass and just look at the halo that's left. And that will tell you which side of the nose is more obstructed than the other. To decongest your nose. I just needed another way to use my mobile phone. I just had to say. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it's probably a more valuable use than most people stuck glued looking at it. Um, but to decongest your nose, you can easily do this. Take a normal breath in through your nose and out through your nose. Pinch your nose and hold. And just gently nod your head up and down holding your breath. As you hold your breath. And just gently nod your head up and down holding the breath. Or you could sway your body. Or you could even walk around holding your nose. And then you let go and you breathe in through your nose. So the objective here is to hold the breath after an exhalation until you feel a moderate to strong air hunger. And at the end then is to let go, but to breathe in through the nose. Wait a minute with about normal breathing and then do it again and repeat it five or six times. And the nose will generally be much freer. So we know that that is true. And we also know that people with a breath hold time of less than 20 seconds are more prone to nasal obstruction but they're more prone to coughing, wheezing, breathlessness. So the breath hold time that we use, we call it bolt score and the oxygen advantage, or it's the control pause in the Buteyko method. And this is the, the screening protocol that Professor Kiesel used. It's simple. So your listeners or viewers have, they need a watch or they need a mobile phone or something to time it. They take a normal breath in through their nose and out through their nose and they pinch their nose. And they time it in seconds. How long does it take until they feel the first definite desire to breathe or the first involuntary movement of the breathing muscles? And the objective is that their breath hold time during rest is above 25 seconds. And individuals with asthma, for example, it's a very good indicator of breathlessness during physical exercise. So, you know, as I said, the person with COVID having a breath hold time of three seconds, all she could do Take a normal breath in and out, hold her nose. And three seconds later, she feels a need to breathe. This lady cannot walk. She doesn't have exercise tolerance. She, she's not able to talk. Her respiratory rate is elevated. So the lower the breath hold time, the faster the respiratory rate, the lower the breath hold time, the more likely we are to use the upper chest. And individuals with chronic, chronic hyperventilation syndrome which is a subset of breathing pattern disorders, tend to have a low breath hold time. If you have an individual with a low breath hold time and a typically faster respiratory rate, we have to ask the question, how can we change the respiratory rate that it becomes slower? 
And we can achieve that with the air hunger exercises. And the other thing is, if we're working with somebody with panic disorder, there are two subsets of people with panic disorder. One subset is able to cope well with air hunger. The other subset isn't. And these individuals, when they feel air hunger or suffocation, it drives them into a really strong fight or flight response, and it can bring on a panic attack. So when I have somebody coming in with panic attacks, I want to find out how well are they able to cope with the air hunger. And I want to give them a teaspoon of the air hunger. I give them a teaspoon to desensitize their body towards the reaction of suffocation. Uh -huh.